All right, guys, pretty excited today to talk to you about one of my favorite subjects, wrist mechanics or wrist articulation. For those of you that have watched my videos, you know I really love to talk about the swinging motion of the arms and the articulation of the wrist. I believe that they play a vital role in creating speed in the golf swing, about 80%, as a matter of fact. While the body, of course, has a very important role, it's the hands and arms that deliver the message. Remember that, really, really important. Before we get started, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and press that subscribe button. There's a bell button next door. Click on that. You'll get a notification every time I release a new video. So we're going to talk about release patterns today. Two release patterns, okay? One is, in my opinion, far more important for the average golfer, although the other one, of course, is relevant. We've got a flexion extension release pattern. That's the first release pattern that you see with golfers like Victor Hovland, uh, Colin Morikawa, Dustin Johnson, of course, Brooks Kepka. You see these guys essentially means they get their lead wrist in a very flexed position at the top of the backswing, a bowed position, which gets the club face in a closed position as it approaches impact, and they give up that flexion as they approach impact. It goes from a flex position to an extended position right here, creates a ton of speed. They got very, very, very strong cores, incredible mobility, a lot of flexibility, and they usually hit fades, guys. That's one thing that you see. These really long hitters, they like to move the ball from left to right and eliminate the left side of the golf course. So they have very little rotation. Uh, it's going to sound like a lot, but, you know, seven or 800 degrees per second in a golf swing is not that high. When you consider guys that have more rotation, could be more than double, 15 to 17, maybe 1800 degrees of rotation per second. Very, very different release. So it's advant advantageous in many respects because it helps them stabilize the face. Here's the thing. A lot of misconceptions about this type of release because, you know, everyone thinks that if you want to get rid of a hook, if you want to hit a fade, you've got to sort of you know, push the handle through here, right? You can't release it. You've got to hold on to it. You've got to use your body. You've got to keep your hands quiet. You can't release the golf club. Well, in my opinion, that is absolutely not the case. You're just releasing it differently. So I love to do this L to L drill. For those of you who watch my videos, L to L, hinge, unhinge, rehinge on the opposite side of the golf ball. So if I go ahead and I can demonstrate this release pattern right here, I'll go ahead and hit one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my lead wrist really flexed at the top of my backswing, try and get it in here as flex as I can get it. Now for me, gosh, I tell you what, if I can get this thing, let's have a look. If I can get this thing to maybe 17 degrees, that will be an absolute miracle. That's where DJ is at the top of his backswing. So let's see if we can have a crack at it. And when I strike the golf ball, I'm going to go ahead and move that lead wrist from here. And I'm going to go ahead and extend it as I swing through. And you'll see if I do that, let's see if I can have a crack at it. This is going to be interesting. If I do that, I'm going to hit the ball from left to right. Well, what do you know? I hit it from left to right. How about that? So let's like take a little look at those numbers for a minute. I go at a dress at 19 degrees of extension. That means that my lead wrist is a little bit cupped, okay? That's what we call a neutral grip. Anything above 30 degrees is going to be considered strong. Anything less than 10 is going to be considered weak. That's kind of somewhere in between. Look at that, guys. I got it to minus 11 at the top. <laughs> I mean, that felt like my left wrist was about to break. When I consider that DJ is at minus 17, I, it's just mind-boggling to me. He can get his wrist in that position. And then, of course, I'm at minus one. I'm in flexion at minus one degree when I make contact. So what did I do? I moved my lead wrist from 11 degrees flex back to one degrees flex at impact. So I'm moving my wrist into extension, just like we discussed, right? Flexion to extension. However, my wrist is still flexed at impact. Important to understand. DJ is at about eight degrees flex when he strikes the golf ball. He's at 17 degrees flexed at the top. So he's moving his lead wrist into extension and he keeps it moving into extension as he swings through the golf ball. Interesting stuff, right? So again, not the ideal release pattern for the average golfer. Why is that? Well, again, in order to release it that way, we need to have a lot of rotation with our lower body. We need to have a lot of right side bend. You have to be extremely immobile and extremely strong. Most of you miss short and or to the right. So you have a tendency to miss with kind of a weak strike. 
generally speaking, weaker grips, palm grips. You guys have talked about this many times. We've got to make sure the grip isn't too weak, okay? When I sit up to a golf ball, if I've got my left wrist sort of turned underneath the handle here, I can go ahead and show you this. If I turn it under the handle, we can see here, I'm only maybe, you know, here we go right here, maybe five, four or five degrees extended. That's a very weak position. If I get to the top of my backswing to try and maintain that position, it's going to be virtually impossible. Even if I try and do it, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm essentially extending my lead wrist. It's very, very difficult. So if you can give yourself a little bit of a stronger grip, put the club a little bit more on the fingers. If you can get a little bit of a cupping in your left wrist to start with, obviously from that position, you've got more mobility to be able to get this thing flexed, okay? If it's already starting weak, you've got no place to go, okay? Very, very difficult. So we get to the top of the backswing. How are we going to get your left wrist more flat for you slicers, for you short hitters? Because that's exactly what's happening. When you get to the top, your left wrist is cupping. Your lead wrist is cupping. There's no question about that. Most of you are getting to the top and you're too open. So how are we going to get it a little bit square at the top of the backswing. In my opinion, it's not by focusing on the lead wrist, it's focusing more on the trail wrist. I've got a great little tip for you. Take the palm of your right hand, guys. You can do it right now. Take the palm of your right hand and just point it at the sky, okay? You can turn around and look at the sky and put your palm in that position. Just look up there, okay? And then kind of turn back towards the golf ball. You're going to feel a little bit of strain on the back of your trail shoulder. That's because you've never had your trail shoulder rotated externally like that before. Normally, we're rotating our shoulders internally, what we call a flying right elbow, and that immediately kicks this lead wrist into extension. So we really want to make some swings, perhaps just right hand only, and feel like that trail wrist, guys, is kind of kicking back on itself or hinging back on itself here. Top of the backswing, you can see the palm of my trail hand is going to point at the sky. It gets my right elbow a little bit more underneath the golf club. It gets me in a much, much stronger position. I'm not focusing so much on my left hand. If you've not done this before, I think it's going to work really, really well for you. Okay, let's have a crack at that. So I'm going to go ahead and start off here. We'll get this going again. <clears throat> go to the top of the backswing. And as I take the club back, I'm really focusing on taking my right hand I'm kind of feeling like it's working under the golf club more and get the palm of my, tra my, my trail hand pointing up at the sky. You can see when I do that, guys, I start off at maybe, where are we here, 25 degrees, 26 degrees, go to the top of the backswing here, and here we are. And you can see here, that's only at 12 degrees, so I'm, I'm in the right position there. I've gone ahead and, and got my, my lead wrist now in a more flexed position, which is ideal. So let's go ahead and hit one just like that. I'm going to go ahead and swing a little harder on this one, see how we get on. That one felt pretty good. Woo! All right. So, you know, the beauty of this is that's 30 degrees to start with, 2 degrees at the top, minus 5 at impact. I really kind of exaggerated that one, but the beauty of this type of release pattern um, is that I'm moving my lead wrist from an extended position to a flex position. I strike the golf with such a strong release when you do that. You're negating loft. You're getting the toe of the club essentially moving down towards the golf ball. It gets you a, a little bit more of a descent angle as well. Those of you struggling with angle of attacks, you get this left wrist very cuppy. And again, when you're normally hitting up on the golf ball, again, hitting behind the golf ball really affects your low point. So taking that lead wrist from this position, guys, and then if you can feel like you're turning the, the toe of the golf club down even a little bit earlier, tremendously helpful when you do that. You can see here, I've got the toe of the club turning back towards the golf ball, and then I've got the butt end of the club turning back towards me. That's really what we're looking for. So if I do it from face on, I've got the toe of the club turning back towards the golf ball, and I've got the butt end of the club turning back towards me. That's kind of what we're looking for. Most of you, unfortunately, are doing the opposite. You've got the toe of the club turning away from the golf ball, and you've got the butt end of the club moving away from you. Whether you're spinning early and getting steep and then going this way, or whether you're getting stuck underneath it, maybe you're trying to shallow with your wrists. I see quite a lot of this on YouTube. I think it's problematic, guys. I really do. Anytime you try and drop the club into this orbit, You've got the butt end of the club working away from you, and you've also got a lot of the time you've got your lead wrist cupping as you do that, opens the club face, which I find it very, very difficult from there to square the club face. So 
ultimately that's what we want to do, okay? We're releasing our speed in that case through rotation, rotation, rather than, of course, that flexion extension release pattern, we're releasing our lead wrist into extension. Very, very different. They both work well depending on the individual. You've got to find what works best for you, okay? So I want you to send me some questions, okay? I answer all the questions I get. I always get back to people. I really appreciate your comments. Really, really high golf IQ from my subscribers. I'm learning as much from you, believe me, as you are from me. I don't have all the answers. If I don't have the answers, I'll find the answers and I'll get them to you. Again, we're all here to grow and learn and expand and try and improve as best we can. Um, but Hack Motion has been very, very helpful. I have to tell you that Hack Motion has been absolutely amazing. They reached out to me, gosh, a week and a half ago. I spent about an hour on the phone with them. They wanted me to do some testing. They're really super guys. They're really, really smart. And uh, obviously, you can get in the weeds here and, and like, like all things, here's the bottom line. Whether you're using training aids or technology, if it's not affecting contact, speed, or direction, or any combination of those three things, it really is window dressing, okay? I can't tell you how many times, certainly when I started teaching, and I think a lot of teachers are guilty of this today, uh, we make changes for the sake of making changes because things don't look right. Imagine if someone got a hold of Dustin Johnson in his early junior days and said, that doesn't look right. We should definitely change it. Well, you may not have even heard of Dustin Johnson. Same thing could be said for like Jim Furyk, right? Jim Furyk takes the club way out here on the backswing. What if someone had got a hold of Jim Furyk when he was young and said, that's no good. That's not going to work. That doesn't look right. We need to change it. We may never have heard of Jim Furyk. So these are just characteristics, guys. It doesn't mean it's wrong. It's characteristics that work well, actually, for those golfers. A very slippery slope with golf instruction. There's no question, okay? Cause and effect. We have to understand that. So this is the release. I'm going to go ahead and just do a little face-on demo for you guys, okay? I love to hinge, unhinge, rehinge. what I call a hitchhiker drill. I love this drill back and through, just like this, okay? Fantastic drill for using this leverage system here. Hinging, unhinging, rehinging. Very, very important. Most of you don't do that. All you do is get kind of stiff wristed, arms and body kind of moving at the same speed here. You've got no speed in the hands and arms. You're trying to spin your, spin your way to more speed with your body. So when I release the golf club, whether I'm uh, releasing it open or whether I'm releasing it with more rotation, I'm still releasing it. I think that's what I want you to understand. It doesn't matter whether you have a flexion extension release pattern, you're trying to stabilize the face. We've heard that a lot, okay, online. <clears throat> I totally get it, right? If you're hitting at 280 and hitting hooks, you need to learn to stabilize the face. But you're not stabilizing the face, guys, by releasing like this. That's not, <laughs> this isn't how we stabilize the club face. Eh? It's just a nightmare, okay? That is not how we do it. We release our speed this way, okay? I'm rehinging the golf club, but the but knuckles through the golf ball are pointing up, okay? When I finish here, I can see the back of my left hand. If you watch a tour player from down the line, just go ahead and watch some golf and film it, okay? Down the line, if you watch this release pattern, you're going to see the back of the left hand. It's going to be pointing back towards the camera. That's someone that is limiting this, they're limiting their rotation. They're releasing this way. They're going from a flex position to an extended position. It is not wrong. It works for them, okay? However, if you're going to release your speed in rotation, someone who's got a more neutral grip, examples would be Tiger Woods, you know, McElroy, um, Fleetwood, okay? All of these guys, they have more rotation. If I go ahead and do my L to L drill, you can see the back of my left hand now is pointing that way, right? It's pointing to the side of me. It's not facing me. It's not pointing up through the ball. It's rotating and pointing more behind me, all right? So I'm using my wrists on in both cases. It doesn't matter which release I'm using. I'm using my wrist. I'm swinging the club freely. And much of the time, you'd be far better off allowing your body to naturally respond to that release pattern. That's what I want you to understand. It's not that the body is not important, but if we start pulling with the body, we start really pulling with the body, gosh, guys, it causes so much trouble. You don't have the ability to be able to separate your lower body, upper body segments. 
as we get older guys in our 50s, 40, 40s, 50s, 60s, almost impossible to play golf this way. So what we've got to do here, <clears throat> you know, keep the back to the target, hinge the club up, get the lead wrist in a more, you know, flexed a position, and then get the toe of the club rotating towards the golf ball, butt end of the club moving towards us, and then send your speed somewhere, give it a home, release the golf club, guys. Release it one way or the other but let it go. All right. I hope that helps. Appreciate the subscriptions. Just hit 15K. Super excited. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put a link in the description. Everyone, anyone that's interested in getting hack motion, give you a little bit of a discount there. I appreciate you watching. I really hope this helps and we'll talk to you soon, guys.